Okay. California scholars, California scholars. Okay, let me get back to the beginning of this. <laughs> Making mistakes. All right, so uh, what we want to talk about is just an intro to California history, and then you know go to the canvas. We'll follow that along, and things will work out well. But um, I want to just tell you, there's two things we want to keep in mind here. Sort of a mentality, a background, a geographical way of thinking about our class, and geography is very important for history, and we're going to emphasize this is the first is that California is a very isolated place and then recently has become less isolated and then now in many ways shoot we think we're the center of the world I mean we've got Silicon Valley up there you know and and they're the ones holding the world together with the internet so so the idea that uh, we've moved from a place of you know very isolated and then became a type of maritime culture and then grew and filled in after World War II especially, and then uh, now see ourselves as the type of center of the world, is a trajectory we need to keep in track with. It's very hard to get through these mountains. There's some people, Donner Party, they eat each other. They, you know, uh, very hard to get through these mountains. So very few people do it. Very, very hard to come up through the deserts from the south. Aztec culture, and we, <laughs> we named them San Diego the Aztecs, but Aztecs never came up here because it's dang hard to get to California. You have these big deserts and, and such. And so the Anza expedition was an attempt to try and get up here. And they do it, but it's so hard it doesn't work. So the way to come up to California is by water. Okay. But water currents, the currents come down the coast of California. The winds come down the coast of California. It's very hard to get from even Baja up to Los Angeles or from... Mexico, further up, uh, Acapulco, up, up this way, you're fighting the currents, you're fighting the winds. And so exploration and development up the coast of California is just not easy. And so other things happen first. And so by, you know, the begin, uh, you know, we're the last part of the Spanish Empire, 1769, when they get to San Diego, is really late. And it's because it's just, we're a very isolated place. We need to keep that in mind okay here uh, when you get here we are this coastal settled place and so that makes there a our geography has a southern california culture which is these mountains really push southern california to be isolated from what we call northern california but it's really central california coast here and then with the gold rush and then especially you know now after world war ii and such is the the real settlement of a third entity which is this sort of central valley entity up there is still very sparsely populated so we have these geographical regions to california uh let me talk about the layers okay uh point loma let's look at point loma right here where we are i'm looking at the ocean i got the bay behind me and uh and so you know point loma is one of these sort of it's actually in, in many ways, the most one of the places with the most complicated layered history. But all California, whenever you, wherever you go, think in terms of layers. The first layer, of course, is always you know ten thousand years of Indian history, of which there's you know things that went on. But we we uh, I'll talk about the difference between anthropology, archaeology, and history, and why we don't do a lot of the ancient history in this class. But uh, this is Ballast Point. It's, that's where North Island is over there. And uh, we think there were at least seasonal camps of Indians out here. If you go up from Ballast Point to Kellogg Beach, just below us, there's a little spring that apparently was there that, that kept enough water going that, that there was a population that could survive year round on, on Point Loma. Eventually it does, but this is the Indian period and then when the Spanish got here what they saw was Point Loma as well it creates the bay first of all and but it protects the boat it creates a great anchorage it's really other than San Francisco it's the best anchorage on the coast of California keep the boat safe all year round you come in around Ballast Point which is that see how, how, they, how you have this wharf here this is Ballast Point come in around it and then anchor your boats in here, which is just below us. See, this is, there again, this is Ballast Point. You sail up around here and then into this. 
And that becomes the port of San Diego. And as the port of San Diego, you would take what we today call Rosecrans Boulevard, get off your boats here and just walk straight into Old Town. And when you're driving on Rosecrans Boulevard down there, think about that. Right behind you is where the boats port their anchorages. And straight ahead, if you don't veer off it, is Old Town. And then during, uh, so there was this Indian period, and then the Mexican, or the Spanish settlement, and then there's a Mexican period. We'll talk about the distinctions here. But the Mexican period is full of all sorts of cosmopolitan activity down in the port of San Diego. This is Richard Henry Dana. These are hide houses that were down there. Richard Henry Dana spends six months living here in his famous book, Two Years Before the Mass. He talks about these Hawaiians that live in an old Russian oven. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a fascinating sort of story. And, uh, and it shows just how, you know, he talks about the Scotsmen and, the, and these Europeans and the South Americans and all sorts of folks, you know, here in, in, uh, in the port of San Diego. And when the Americans came in, when the United States came in, they, of course, came in as the Navy. California is, because of geography, it's conquered by the Navy. And the Navy come in, and uh, uh, San Diego, they rule martial law over the rest of, of California. And the, they anchor the boats here, right below us in Point, Point Loma. Now, um, when the Americans get here, the United States gets here, an American's term is very awkward, we'll talk about that, is um, the United States is very good at, at, at sending, you know, at organizing things. And they send the Coast Survey out here under, under the guy John Alden, and they map the coast better, they figure out here's Ballast Point, they figure out the depth, put a lighthouse in here, and begin to make the, the coast much more safe for navigation. You're still very isolated. You still don't have a railroad or anything, but you're at least making the coast safer. Now, along in the late Mexican period and on into the, uh, the United States period, we get a lot of immigration from the Pacific Islanders, the Chinese, the Japanese, and this is a Chinese encampment uh, in, in, uh, right here below us at um, Point Loma. And uh, it was quite flourishing. Now, uh, this is a junk rig here. You can see uh, with, with the full bat and sail off of, off of uh, Ballast Point. And, and so you had, a, here again, this sort of very lively place. The Portuguese come in in about 1901 and, and begin to set up Point Loma, the village there, Roseville. Very, very exciting. Now, with the coming of Mark, uh, uh, Catherine Tingley, uh, you have this colony of very wealthy, powerful people showing up on the top of the hill here, Point Loma, and they create what is our, our campus. Uh, this, is, this is Cabrillo Hall, where you know you move over there. This is our Greek theater here. And they were... Uh, you know, they, wonderful people, nice people, good people in so many ways, but also very racist. This, this building here is called the Aryan Temple, you know, like the Aryan Nation type of thing. Like most every, you know, of the folks of the New Englanders and, and, and uh, you know, folks from the East Coast coming to the West Coast, they carried with them ideas about the dominance of, of uh, white Anglo-Saxon Protestantism. And so, so they really brought that here and implanted it into a lot of architecture and, and here. And uh, the Chinese are excluded and pushed back. They leave it. And, and uh, Point Loma, in many ways, becomes more sort of white bread at this point, you know, because uh, a lot of that diversity under the Mexicans uh, goes away. And uh, this is the Raja Yoga school that they built. And you can see the ex exotic architecture. They, they weren't so oriented to white Anglo-Saxon Protestant that they didn't think big. They, they saw themselves as sort of fulfilling a, a cosmic world uh, universal uh, role, uh, which would fulfill a lot of stuff from India and other places around the world. And so 
very fascinating place, uh, but suddenly California starts to think of itself as, you know, here especially, but then in other places here in California, as a type of utopian leadership or, you know, I don't know. <laughs> uh, we start to get the, into the mentality of us today. Wealth comes here a lot. Uh, the uh, air industry starts building down there where the uh, um, airport area is. Uh, Ryan built the uh, plane for Lindbergh and Lindbergh flies in 1927, I think it is. So we have Ryan Library built on our campus because of this wealthy family here on the point. The Rohr family is also a wealthy aeronautical family and they build us buildings on the point. Bef long before the Nazarene showed up here, just the other college that was here. And uh, in fact, that's what it looked like is this is, we have always been at the top of the hill, a college, uh, the Naz, um, not always, but uh, the, the Theosophical Society chartered us as a university in 1909. And so there's always layers of these universities that, that actually exist where we are. The Nazarenes came in and took over in 1973 after this picture was taken. And then um, <clears throat> one last thing is after, after World War II, a lot of things changed in California. A lot of things grow very fast and fill in. A lot of the great institutions come af uh, before World War II and then a lot of the like, universities and museums and you know, all that sort of stuff. And then a lot of the, uh, the power and the wealth and everything of uh, population come in afterwards. And Shelter Island, which is, uh, was a sandbar, as you can see, they built it out, they put a hotel, this, this restaurant is here at the point here, the Valley High, and this is what you see on Stock, Scott Street, Trader Mort's, but there was the port director of San Diego wanted Point Loma and Shelter Island to be tiki, and that we would represent a type of South Pacific uh, to the rest of the world, but then also, you know, that we have all these sailors who had been in the South Pacific who decide to live here. So, so these are the layers. We th think in terms of layers. You walk around here, and when you see Tiki Arc, drive past Trader Mort's, you get on Rosecrans Boulevard. You get, there's layers and layers and layers of history here. Uh, most uh, simplistically, there's an Indian layer, Spanish layer. Mexican layer, and then a, a U.S. layer, which is a type of conquest layer, then a progressive era, and then after World War II. And that's the way our course is going to run. We're going to sort of go through these layers of history and really especially look at the coast because we are a maritime culture before we're brought into the world as a fully developed culture.